Today, there are two species of alligator, the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. The American alligator is the larger of the two species and is endemic to the southeastern United States. The Chinese alligator is listed as critically endangered, with only about 300 individuals existing in the wild. Neither species lives in Australia. Here, we ask the question, why are there no alligators in Australia? Although alligators are confined to the Americas and China, crocodiles are found across a much greater range. In fact, crocodiles are found in Australia, whilst alligators are not. But why is this? They both occupy similar niches, and although there are many differences between the two species, to the untrained eye, they look and behave similarly. It all comes down to their evolutionary history, where the species originated from, and how crocodiles evolved a unique feature, whilst alligators did not. Alligators are apex predators in their environment. Today, they typically consume fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. In America, they also pose a significant threat to people and their pets, who may stray too close to the water's edge. They occupy freshwater habitats, which is one of the reasons why they never made it to Australia. While the crocodilian lineage extends back over 200 million years to the late Triassic period, modern forms did not appear on the scene until the Cretaceous period. This was around 145 million years ago, and fossil evidence suggests that these modern crocodilians first appeared in what would become known as Europe. From there, they spread to the Americas and beyond. At the time, the landmasses and continents were very different from today. Eurasia and North America formed a northern supercontinent called Laurasia. Animals could move freely across this enormous landmass, which was separated from another large landmass called Gondwana. Gondwana was more southerly and consisted of the modern-day continents of South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. The Cretaceous period experienced a huge amount of geological and climatic change, the landmasses were breaking apart and moving, oceans were forming, and this had a massive impact on life on Earth. By the late Cretaceous period, North America was split in half, separating the west from the east. India moved northward towards Asia, while Australia and Antarctica remained connected, drifting away from South America and Africa. Crocodilians were already thriving on the planet. They were wide-ranging and varied in size, shape, and the niches they occupied. One of the largest known species was Sarcosuchus, which measured 9.5 meters, 31 feet long, and weighed up to four metric tons. It lived 130 million years ago and likely lived in freshwater habitats. However, as the landmasses and continents broke up and drifted apart, animals that once covered a large global range became more isolated. This is what initially happened to crocodilians in North America. Crocodiles and alligators split from each other around 80 million years ago. Both thrived in the climate of North America during the late Cretaceous period. The climate was warmer than it is today, which was perfect for cold-blooded reptiles to survive in. Whilst both crocodiles and alligators lived side by side, that was soon to change. Crocodiles could disperse whilst alligators remained more localized. Today, alligators are found only in the United States and China, while crocodiles have a much broader global range. They live throughout the tropics in Africa, Asia, the Americas, and Australia. The ability of some crocodiles to tolerate salt water is the reason for their global spread. Unlike alligators, saltwater crocodiles evolved salt glands and impermeable skin. Even when the land masses split apart, isolating other species, the saltwater crocodile could still migrate from one continent to another. They can tolerate salinity from 0 to 60 percent without adverse effects. In comparison, alligators cannot survive in salt water for any significant length of time. The external salt secreting glands in saltwater crocodiles are located on their tongue. There are 20 to 40 pores on the tongue through which they excrete excess sodium chloride, enabling crocodiles to control their blood salt levels even in the open sea. 
Being able to survive in salt water meant that saltwater crocodiles could traverse open oceans. They could cross between continents and dominate new lands. Even today, they are known to travel hundreds of miles across open seawater, using currents to help them swim such great distances to find new hunting grounds and territories. Being cold-blooded reptiles, they can go for weeks or even months without eating anything, allowing them to travel far without needing to stop to hunt. The alligators that remained in North America evolved and diverged into other species. Between 55 and 65 million years ago, came and split from alligators and headed south. The other species of alligator, the Chinese alligator, split from the American one around 33 million years ago. This species is thought to have reached China not by swimming across the open sea, but by crossing the Bering Land Bridge, like many other animals of the time. When sea levels rose and the land bridge disappeared, the two distinct species remained isolated from one another, with the Pacific Ocean forming a formidable barrier between the two continents. The Chinese alligator once thrived in China. It inhabited freshwater waterways and was particularly abundant in the lower Yangtze area. These alligators were much feared by local people. However, with the development of rice farms centuries ago, the Chinese alligators' habitat dried up. Their wetland territories were converted to rice paddies, causing their population numbers to plummet. By the 1950s, the alligator was only found in three distinct regions, and now its range is restricted to an area of just two square miles. With so few left in the wild, there is major concern about inbreeding within the species and whether they can be saved from extinction. Caymans inhabit waterways in Mexico, Central America, and South America. It is unknown exactly how the smallest crocodilian, which averages a weight of just 6 to 40 kilograms, 13 to 90 pounds, made it across to South America. Fossils date back to before the Panama Land Bridge was formed, so paleontologists assume they swam across. Like alligators, caimans are not tolerant of salt water, but perhaps the gap between the two continents at that time was narrow enough for them to make the journey. As well as their inability to tolerate salt water like crocodiles, alligators have some other obvious differences from their cousins. These include the shape of the snout, the structure of the teeth, the skin color, and behavior. Alligators possess a much broader, more U-shaped mouth, whilst crocodiles have pointy snouts. When their mouths are closed, the lower teeth are visible in crocodiles but not in alligators. Crocodiles are more olive or tan in color, while alligators are black or gray. Finally, crocodiles are known to be more aggressive and therefore more dangerous than alligators. Despite these differences, crocodiles and alligators can survive together. There is one place on Earth where they still live side by side, North America. Both the American alligator and the Florida crocodile inhabit the Florida Everglades. They are limited by their water preference. Alligators inhabit freshwater lakes, swamps, and ponds, while crocodiles typically live in saltwater rivers and waterways. If alligators were introduced to the freshwater ecosystems of Australia, they would likely survive. However, they would probably compete with the crocodilians already present. Freshwater crocodiles, which are endemic to Australia, inhabit inland waterways. They are smaller and less aggressive than saltwater crocodiles. Although freshwater crocodiles can tolerate salt water, they are kept upstream by the more dominant saltwater crocodiles. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest extant reptiles in the world and have been known to exceed 20 feet in length. They typically spend the winter months in rivers and then head down to estuaries and the sea during the hotter season. Having three species of crocodilian in Australian waters would impact the ecosystem. They all eat similar prey, although the larger species consume larger animals. Fish stocks might decline, and there could be competition for territories and space. Being a naturally less aggressive species, alligators would need to find their niche to survive in Australia. Otherwise, they would likely be pushed out by the crocodiles. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment about what you would like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.